Jonathan Bush is a phenomenon. As you'll see, this guy has more energy than, uh, than, than, than most entrepreneurs, and entrepreneurs are known for their energy. Uh, he's a healthcare uh, innovator, a, a serial healthcare innovator, most well known for uh, having started uh, uh, Athena Health back in 1997, which he ran for about 20 years and grew into a major participant in the digital, the growing digital healthcare ecosystem that he helped create uh, as a sort of more modern version of Epic and Cerner and that kind of thing. Is that a fair way to describe it, Jonathan? Kind of, wait, now you're muted. Sorry, got to unmute. Un wait, can I unmute you? Hold on. No, I can't. Not my obituary, it's good press. Okay, but uh, anyway, so you, you did Athena Health, you got forced out by a, a shareholder activist and you're not, you're not, you're not resentful about that, I don't think, right? But you, you have so many things in the works now still to improve healthcare. Um, we called this session at your suggestion, half price healthcare that's twice as good. So maybe we should just start out by asking you to define that and, and what it means. Well, maybe we go one step back and, and connect to your interview with Dambisa. I mean, I think, Great. why, what, why, why that? You know, uh, and I think the, the reason is, is, is an existential one that the layers of cruft that one must pass through in order to be an American dream participant accumulate every year, the silt at the bottom of the pond that you've got to struggle through covered in mud to get into the game uh, accumulates with time, with establishment, with wealth, with, with accidents that we want to protect, the, the number of never again, never let this happen again laws that we've passed and highway safety codes and transportation codes and privacy codes just make it harder and harder. And the biggest of these, uh, the biggest of these existential barriers to participating in the American game is the cost of healthcare. You have a, uh, you know, we had a great sort of op optimistic push with Obamacare to create a national access and inadvertently uh, increase the rates for the average person, average unsubsidized middle-class American by over 90% over a very short period of time for a product that got no better. Maybe it Wait, got- Wait, you're, you're saying the average, well, give me that, give us that statistic again. Median premium went up about 89%. What you pay per member per month to get- Okay, but how does that compare with the rate? Wait, wait, wait. How, does that how does that compare with the rate at which it was going up before Obamacare? Is it did it start going up even faster? Because yeah, that was going spike. up anyway. It was right? a huge spike. Yeah. Uh, okay. You had all kinds of kind of quasi coverage alternatives that people could opt out and say, I'm going to get a less intense coverage at that price, which kept prices down. Uh, now, there were lots of wonderful things. It was, we were all trying to do something that was national in nature and, uh, you know, copy Europe, which is always our sort of. So you're not totally against it. You just. It didn't have all the oh, good qualities. I mean, listen, I'm totally against it, but I, I think that the spirit of it was wonderful. Okay. Uh, and, and, and you are a Bush, so we're not going to forget that. Go on. Yeah. 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 But I, and I, he I, is I, related to all those people, by the way. But go on. Yeah. But, but, but my thing, my, my point of this is, you know, great. So we created a, a new layer of welfare state, which is terrific for, you know, maybe that's reassuring. We need a safety net. We're not a, you know, I'm not a wild libertarian. And, uh, but, but what we, what we like about, the sectors of our economy where we don't have a safety net is their efficiency curve. Nobody, right. you know, there's no cell phone safety net. And we now carry crazy supercomputers circa 1997 in our pockets for under a thousand dollars, right? That's an incredible curve. The singularity is not near in healthcare. We don't have that wonderful disruptive innovation of super cheap alternatives at the edge moving their way in, or at least we haven't had. Uh, and if we don't, figure out how to include that with our safety net thinking, we will have an existential nightmare if the cost of healthcare continues to go. We've already had darn near right. I mean, you could look at the Trump administration as a bit of a healthcare backlash. Uh, and so at least if you're a healthcare guy, everything looks like a healthcare something. Uh, so that's how I see it. Uh, and so what I'm interested in now is really taking on, look, the technology we have, if you were to whiteboard out a way of delivery, you could deliver, hence the title, vastly better healthcare than the average rich guy uh, receives in this country for literally half the price. I don't mean by cutting out, you know, making people sign off to die or earlier when they're old. And I don't mean, you know, with some sort of grand new invention that's a, you know, cancer, universal cancer pill. I mean, just deploying the assets that exist today 
if you include virtual medicine. If you and include- using tech, this is, that's a very economic way of looking at the world. So thank you for saying that. But concretely, what are you doing? I know of at least two major efforts you have underway. Well, what we're really trying to do is, if you, if you think about the, the core of our healthcare system, is this you know heavily regulated, heavily monopolized, centered you know system of sort of kiretsu of small number of players, payers and providers, whose atomic unit is the medical claim, right? You pay a premium, and then the people sort of turn your premium into profit and claims paid out to different players. Uh, there's no product management. There's no bundling of different services. There's no guaranteeing. There's very little, at least, in the way of normal marketing and product management, product strategy going on in that world. It's now reached such a fecund place. It's gotten so expensive and so sclerotic that Silicon Valley and the entrepreneurial community that I've been very interested in trying to get going for a very long time has really cottoned on to uh, kind of attaching itself to the fringe and saying, well, (laughs) you know, and we saw Teladoc go public. That's one of the early great sort of uh, uh, groundbreakers in this space. Now there are tens of thousands of companies, $14 billion in venture capital just in 2020 during COVID, uh, going into what I will call edge computing of health. Um, whether And that ranges from the, the WHOOP bracelet that's got an accelerometer and can give you a pretty good signal of whether you got COVID, among other things, whether you're sleeping well, uh, to companies like Firefly Health, that have gotten the entire benefit and said, listen, if you let everything start with this app, we can actually cut the full cost of coverage. And I mean unlimited, I mean Dana-Farber if you get cancer and Jocelyn if you get diabetes, I don't mean lightweight care, I mean full-fledged care, cut it in half, as long as you agree to virtualize what can be virtualized. Okay, so what is Firefly Health exactly? That's a company you are now executive chairman of the largest shareholder in. You didn't start it, but you're the really helping to- The greatest job ever created, executive chairman. Yeah, well, your Nothing wife is CEO, is so we'll, we'll just drop that in there. It's the greatest job. Uh, I, I coach the CEO every week uh, and I you know, barely organize the board meetings. Uh, but basically Firefly is what I consider the sort of, I'm interested in this question. I'm interested in the existential question of medicine, right? Can we actually- use all this science and research and effort we've been putting into uh, create a market-based solution that actually, below, forget being like Europe or the NHS, God bless them, they're great at that. I wanna be a thousand times different and a thousand times better at some right. uniquely American product that gets made a little better, a little richer, a little always on, a little more continuous every year. So Firefly is the manifestation that I'm most excited about because they've taken on the entire experience of medicine. They do direct primary care streaming through an app. And then as needed, they grab specialists into that almost like a three-way conference where you always have your team that knows you. Your so let me just try to summarize it and tell me if I get yeah. it wrong. Go it's ahead. a healthcare delivery system that's also your insurer in effect, where you have a, a primary doctor, but whenever you have even the most minor thing wrong with you, you can text or email or video chat with somebody who's an expert. So you can see people far more inexpensively, more uh, spontaneously on any, I think you're, you're also leveraging I- I- infrastructure that has emerged in recent years, like the urgent care system that is all over now the country, like walk-in right. clinics that n- never used to exist before. So you're right. building Sometimes. on top of that. Right. And, and, and only when someone gets really sick, if you need to, you'll fly them to Dana-Farber or whatever, but you basically take responsibility for their full health care. They don't fill out any insurance forms, et cetera. Is that a quick summary? That's it. That's it. We create a super accessible, super affordable, always on sort of live edge to the healthcare system with this app and this care team that's on watch. They've got to, you know, think, imagine a trading desk where there's eight people watching 5,000 of their members 24 seven looking for us. And, and they'll talk about anything because they actually want, unlike the typical doctor who, you know, frankly needs you to get in, get a procedure and get out because they need to get to the next person so they can pay their mortgage. This team is already paid. They want to engage the member because they want to make sure they catch whatever it is that will cost money early. So right. you want to talk about sleep, diet, sex, performance at work. There's nothing that's kind of too low end for this team which is a leverage team. It's not only, a, it's one doctor and then nutritionists and therapists and, and the bot, you know, that's watching and, ma- and managing the easy stuff. 
that idea, we've, we've grown used to this in other things, right? We still have our, here I am on my laptop, which I never use. I do 90% of my computing on the thing that was born as an iPod, right? And then that I was able to click and hear some music on and it emerged and grew and evolved. And I suctioned more of my compute out to the edge, right? As we all have done, right? Healthcare now for the first time, I believe, is going to experience that, albeit more lumbering, more regulated, but it's going to experience that emergence of super cheap, always on, unlimited availability, edge compute, but for medicine. It's a very powerful model and congrats on, on helping to build it out. I know you said to me on the phone that actually hospital stays for this group of people who are covered by Firefly is, are dramatically lower than the general population. 52% reduction in the presentment at the emergency room and residual, you know, downstream, one can assume the same thing on the, on the hospital days. Raise your hand if you haven't found yourself in an emergency room just to talk to someone, just to resolve something that you wish you could have resolved. By, by being able to virtualize that visit, to, re, to unbundle and rebundle the idea of the doctor and the bed and the building and the problem, we can grab grab an urgent care room, grab, an, grab a, a, a specialist who isn't at the hospital right now. We can even send an EMT up to your house with an IV bag and, a, and, a, and an iPad uh, to recreate just that urgent care moment for a second to clear you or to give you the antibiotics you need or whatever. It's just a massively, we are massively overbuilt uh, in our healthcare system. Because and so by not, by not sending people to the hospital, you save so much money. That's partly where you're able to offer- You got it. Is that, the, is that the single biggest cost saving? You keep people out of the hospital by essentially giving them more wellness treatment in effect? That is the single biggest. The second biggest is yeah. taking a careful look at what drugs they're on uh, and reformulating it. Doctors don't like to constantly check and titrate and tweak and tweak and tweak because that doesn't, a tweak doesn't rise to the level of a visit to the doctor. It's not a claim. We don't mind. Right. We'll tweak every day a tiny micron up and down all the time. And so it's that wow. continuous tracking of those big spenders by switching it out for behavioral support, that's the Firefly play. But you're gonna see a lot of other plays like that. You've seen automated ones, you've seen uh, just the devices that people can wear and learn extraordinary amounts about their health. You've got the genotyping going on. All of this is going to form a new substrate, vastly more interesting in real time than the bullshit, excuse me, claims-based medicine that we've grown used to. But in, in Firefly has been around for a while. You've been involved as the executive chairman for two years. It's really growing. It just raised 40 million bucks from a group led by Andreessen Horowitz. Um, uh, your wife joined as CEO just before you joined as the primary shareholder, et cetera, all sorts of uh, synergistic things there. Um, is there, a, I mean, do you have competitors? Is, is, are you sort of hoping to be a model for competitors? I mean, obviously you're not gonna be able to grow fast enough to do this for the whole country, but clearly your vision is everybody ought to have access to this. How do you think of that? Absolutely right. This is very much that scene in Monty Python where you know one of them has got the 10 commandments, but somebody else has got the four chickens and somebody else has got the 32 commandments. We don't know what the one true path of this digital virtual always on medicine will be. I'm a big fan of Firefly obviously, and I put a lot behind it, but there are dozens of these plays all taking different approach. So for example, Firefly is very focused on medium and small businesses. Most yeah. of these new companies are focused on large businesses because as self-insured businesses, they have more flexibility to try things and, and get the savings out the bottom. Yeah. Firefly yeah. helps to get these guys to join group captives in other, way, in other ways of getting to see the benefits of their savings efforts that's more cumbersome. So right. I think all this, I love that primordial ooze phase of a marketplace, you know, yeah. where you've got a lot of inventions swirling around. Remember the, the Newton, <laughs> like there's just a lot of different attempts before we standardize on Android and iOS. Uh, and, and, oh. and, and we now sort of take it for granted as a key tool in life. Healthcare, digital first healthcare is kind of in that early phase right now. Uh, and it's, it's, it's electric. Yeah. Uh and uh, so somebody in the, in, the, in the questions asked, what percentage of your interactions with the members are via bots? Zero percent via bot, but a lot of the uh, automation right now is in things like setting up uh, appointments downstream, which lab is closest. So there's a lot of automation that's okay, you need a, we need a blood, we need a urine test. 
we know where your app is, we know where the labs that are the best, uh, you know, to serve you are. And so we can automate the process of dropping that into your app, into your app stream. What we do have right, and we, but we might get to bots in the, in the text thread as we learn more about the messaging. Right now we have care guides that are kind of just purely navigator coaches. Uh, yeah. Some of them have nutrition degrees, but they're really about lifestyle management that are doing, that are basically a human bot helping with the coaching. Then you bump up to therapists and nurse practitioners, then you bump up to a doctor. So it is the leverage uh, combined with some of the back end automation that's letting us afford this. And we're doing, the average Firefly member is seeing their provider team checking in, having a visit 41 times a year. The average American sees their doctor, primary care doctor, once every 19 months. It's wow. just a totally different yeah. level of engagement. Right. And I know, you know, you're marketing it to businesses to reduce their costs of right. providing healthcare to their employees, because that's one of the bizarre elements of the American system that somehow we ended up getting healthcare from our employers. Um, I know you, we have a very senior former executive of uh, Kaiser in the audience, or at least he was there just a second ago, but somebody just asked a related question, because I know you told me on the phone, it's Kaiser without the buildings, right? Kaiser Permanente, right. which is that that's combined it. insurer and provider. But uh, John Ziegler asked a question that's related to that. He's saying, okay, there's all these systems having bonds, 99 year bonds to pay for gigantic new hospitals, et cetera. What happens to those yeah. if these light asset businesses like yours start to, to succeed? Burn, baby, burn. I mean, it's tragic, but they've <laughs> got to go. We need hospitals, right? We need hospitals, but we need maybe a tenth as many as we have today. Uh, and really what we need are point solution surgical centers. We need narrow focus factories that don't get confused between this procedure and that or this disease and that because they're really narrowly focused in. This idea of these everything stores, general stores that kind of do an okay job of everything, uh, have a wonderful provenance. It's a history of which we should be incredibly proud. Uh, I mean, here in Boston, we had the marathon bombing. I can't talk about it without tears coming to my eyes watching those just ambulances and doctors and everybody flexing and not one person who didn't die instantly was killed. I mean, we need that at some lo small level, but it's just a smaller level. It's we okay. need about 20% of it. We're not even getting to some of your other fascinating projects. And one thing you told me that I wanted to throw in is that 14 billion in DC money is going to digital first healthcare right now, which is- Went, went in 2020, we'll see in 2020, 2020. Maybe bigger. That's a good thing. but. Quick question, this has to be the final one, but you just said we have 10 times too many hospitals, didn't you? That's a hard thing for a lot of people to hear right after the pandemic, when all these Terrifying. hospitals were, what, Terrifying. so wait, how, if we had one-tenth as many hospitals, what would have happened last year when, you know, 100,000 plus Americans were, you know, in the hospital for the pandemic? We, 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 in times of disaster, need to be able to flex and take over gymnasiums and ho hotels and, have strategic stores ready. I know that, you know, there's a lot of discussion about my cousin George's work with strategic stores that was not kept current. Uh, the pandemic preparation was not kept current, but uh, having rooms uh, fully paid for by average Americans who can't afford their healthcare year round every year so that they happen to be there ready for the 100 year plague is not the right strategy. Okay, but Mr. Bush, Yes, sir. You're saying government has to be the one to make sure that that back end infrastructure is there, right? Absolutely. I'm a, okay. I'm, I'm a Republican, okay. not an anarchist. OK, well, you are so interesting to talk to and I love it. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but um, it was great. thank you. Thank you for joining us, Jonathan. And uh, I hope we can revisit and, and get an update and maybe learn about Zeus, Athena's relative that you're also starting. Give us a quick summary of that, if you can, in 30 seconds. Well, basically all these now thousands of companies uh, need a common platform. So EMRs in their old day, everybody had a separate picture of a patient like the blind men and the elephant. Uh, we're gonna build a national backbone for these companies to build on uh, so that they can get to their products more quickly and they can have better continuity of information about people who wanna be shared. So kind of a tech platform for, you all, the fire, for all the Firefly. That's right. GitHub for Firefly. Uh, Git, GitHub for Firefly. Yeah, for healthcare companies. Very cool. Firefly. All right, Jonathan, thank you so much. Great thank talking. you, David. Keep going, babe. <laughs> we won't stop.